Okay, guys, this is a rundown of what the L7 grid can do for you. Now, I think this is super important for all guitarists to learn because it takes the guesswork out of playing in all keys. If that's the case, what we need to understand first is what is key? A key is a family of chords that all work together. Now, we can be agnostic about the note names in this exercise completely because this applies to all keys. This is the most powerful lesson for learning how to play in every key on your guitar. We're going to look at a major key. And the first thing we need to understand is the tonality of the chords in the key. Now, in this example, I'm going to do this in the key of G because it's got the dots there and that's super useful for us to see stuff. So I'll put those dots in there. So that's going to be three, five, seven and nine. Because we're in the key of G, we're going to start on the letter G. Those are the notes. Those are the ingredients for our key. These notes here, we make triads out of them. We make sevenths out of them. We can make ninths out of them. These seven ingredients here can become so much more than you think. We take these individual notes and then what we do is we turn them into chords. Now, when we turn them into chords, we have a way of being agnostic about what key we are in. And the way we do that is we just use Roman numerals. Now, the way I write Roman numerals is major chords are uppercase. So that means it's got these serifs on them like this. I think they're called serifs. Now, if we come across here, then the next chord that we get in Roman numerals is going to have two dots. That means lowercase, which means minor. So let me just apply that to that. So lowercase there means minor. This one here, it's minor. So I'm going to put a little m next to it, which means that it's a minor. So we've got G major, A minor, B minor. This one is uppercase, so that means it's C major. This one is uppercase, which means it's D major. This is lowercase called six, and that's going to give us a minor. Now, this is a funny one, and we're not necessarily going to use this one today, but it is part of the grid as well. And that gives us this F sharp diminished. That little degree sign there means diminished. So essentially, instead of putting this information on there and only having one framework, if we use this Roman numeral framework, then this applies to every key. And there are 12 keys, realistically. There is some debate if you want to think about the key of C sharp, for instance, C sharp major, then it's easier to play that as D flat major. Just think there's 12 keys, 12 major keys. OK, what we do is we discover where that is there. That's the important note. We look on the E string for this because this is what we do. We find where the tonic is. The tonic is the note that we name the key after. So if it's a key of G, then it's the tone that determines what the key is. So the tonic is the key tone. If anybody's seen that Masters of the Universe with Dolph Lundgren, they're looking for the key tones for the universe. We look on the E string and we can find that the G is going to be the third fret here. I put the dots in there to help us, but let's put that there. Three, five, seven. Now the thing is, once we understand how the L7 grid fits on here, we don't need these frets to help us to find where we are. We only need that to help us to find the tonic. So G is chord one. First thing I'm going to do though, is I'm just going to separate these a little, and I'm going to put the major chords together. If we had the A string, the third fret would be where chord four would live. So there's one, there's four, and then if we go up, we can see that we go up a whole step there, we get to chord five. Now, this is the way it's going to plot out. I'm going to show you how this relates to two chord shapes that we use all the time that use an E shape and an A shape, and these are the main suspects for our bar chords. I'm going to show you that in a moment, but let me just work my way through this and show you what's going on here, guys. So A minor and B minor, well, G and A minor, they're separated by a whole step. So A minor goes here like this, B minor, is up here again. Then we get E minor here, and that is going to be a whole step above from the D. So this goes here like this. Now, if I wanted chord seven, that would live a whole step up here, but we're going to leave chord seven out. This is the one I call wobbly bob. 
because what we're interested in really here is the majors and the minors. The diminished chord gets used more in classical and jazz. So we're just going to forget that one for now. We're going to assume that we're playing pop and rock here, guys. You know, we're just learning some songs. So this is what I call the L7. Notice that shape there. The L7 grid. Okay. Now I'm going to rewrite that out there called the L7 grid. Because of these little bracket shapes, these bracket shapes, they pop up all the time on the guitar. You just need to look out for them. So let me just explain. With some color, we can organize our major triads, our major chords out, by using this pattern there. That's the seven. By using that there, we can see that the major chords are arranged, they're parallel, they're on the same fret, but they're adjacent to each other, and then chord five is a whole step above. It's very, very simple for you to get your head around. Now, if you're a punk rocker, you go one, four, five, and those are your three punk rock chords. Bang some power chords on that and you are ready to rebel and write a protest song. So that takes care of these guys here. So you see that's major and that's where they live on the fretboard. Now, what we need to do is we need to sort out these ones here, don't we? So this is it. Two, three and six. Now, hopefully you can see this L7 business here. Now, I remember that band L7 from the 90s, you know, that all girl grunge band. I like their music. This is why it's stuck. And that's what it does, guys. It just looks like an L and a seven. There's the L, and there's the seven. Now, like I say, we could be agnostic about the key. If I get rid of these fret markers here, this works in all positions, guys, because the key thing is this note here on the E string. This is the tonic. So so if I change this to be the fifth fret, this would be the key of A major. If I change this to be the seventh fret, it would be the key of B major. At the sixth fret, we would be in the key of B flat major. So you don't have to be scared of any of the keys. You just need to know the names of the notes on your E string, which is why if you don't know that, then you're going to be lost. I've done a video on that and I'll put that in the end screen. You can see that all I need to do then is transfer this information. Okay, so I've gone up there. Now all I need to do is just put my sharps in wouldn't have a key of G sharp, but I'll put these all in just so that you can see how this works. So you can see that all I need to do is apply any of these here to this point here. This is applying to this. So that means I can shift these around. Now that we've got this here, I want to show you how this translates into these chords. So guys, we're going to put down our L7 grid here. And all we really need to know, like I say, is our tonic. I'm going to do this in the key of G like we started off before. And that's the critical one there, guys. That's the one chord. It's the tonic. That's the tone that decides what key we are in. And we're finding that on the E string there. Now we're going to utilize the E and the A string. Now this is what I call a string pair. So we've got a string pair going on here as well. What we do is we take that one, put that four in there, put the five in there. Those are the majors. We can turn those, like I say, into power chords. We can have them as triads. We can have them as expensive sounding chords. We can get all that good stuff going on there. So look at this. There's three and there's six. You can see we've got the L7 grid, but how the hell do I use this, Ricky? This is the question you might be asking yourself. Well, these are E-shaped chords. This is how you lay out your bar chords in the key. If you can play them as bar chords, then play them as bar chords. If you can't play them as bar chords, there are cheats. I have them on the channel. This is going to be at the third fret. This here is going to be the root note for my chord. Now, because it's on the E string, I know this is a major shape. So this is going to be the major chord shape. And that looks like your bog standard E. If you look at that, can you see your E chord there? Now, here's the thing. I'm going to do these E shaped chords coming up here. And I'm going to put this one in here. This is the fifth. This is the root. And this would be where you would bar across, guys. So this relates to this chord here. That's your starting chord. You can think of it in that way. This is going to be chord two. Notice the spelling. It is minor. I'm going to draw that out there. Fret five, my root note is still on the E string because these are E shaped chords from the cage system. So this ties into the cage system as well, if you understand that. Now this belongs to this one. This is minor. If we go fifth root, now what we need to do is remember that this is a major third because this is why it's a major chord. If we flatten that third, it becomes a minor third. So if I put that minor third here, 
that gives me the next chord along. And I could look at this and I think to myself, this is chord one, this is chord two. Next, we're going to do this down here. This is a minor chord as well. And it's exactly the same shape as this, which is convenient because the less work we have to do to get the music out, the more we can focus on connecting with the music and saying what is in our heart musically. So that's chord three. This is at fret seven. And like I say, this is completely movable. You can shift it up into any other key. Here's where it gets interesting. These are A-shaped chords. We're going to focus on this A string. This is the root for our chord. And this is on the third fret here. So this is an A, B, and that's a C. So that's going to be a C chord. You see, I don't even really need to know this. I just need to be able to play the shape. So there's the C. Now I need to know what the tonality of the chord is. So that's a chord four, which is major. So that means I get this five, R, three, here. Now this is interesting because I talk about 5R3 a lot on my channel because it's a little secret decoder for helping you to navigate your way around your strings. There's the bar chord guys. Third fret and this becomes chord four. So you've got chord one, chord four. Now we're going to do chord five which we're pulling in over here from the grid. A root and then this is major so we're going to go 5R3. Uh, so you can see that that's an A shape there guys. Then we get this fifth here, put the bar across there. We don't use the E string in this shape because it's an A shaped chord. This is going to be chord 5, it's at fret 5. Now if I look at this and look at my notes and I think okay that's a G, that's a C, that's going to be a D, then this is going to give me a D major. But notice I'm not putting that on there. I'm being very agnostic about what key I'm in here because I don't want to get bogged down in too much complexity. I'm just following the shapes so I can find out where I am. Because if you don't know where you are on the fretboard, you're lost. And if you're lost, you play bum notes. If you play bum notes, then you feel bad about yourself. We don't want you to feel bad about yourself at all. We want you to feel good about your playing. We want you to feel as if you're getting somewhere. Now, this is chord six. This is at fret seven on this example here. Chord six, which is a minor chord. Because remember, this blue bracket here, two, three, and six, these are the minor chords. One, four, and five are the major chords. So major, minor. That's the easiest way to remember it. Now, fifth root, this is a minor chord. So before I had a major third here, if I flatten it down one, then I get a flat third. And that forms that A minor shape. Can you see there's the A minor shape chord there? Then if I put the fifth here to finish that off and then a bar across, I have all six of my major and minor chords. I haven't put the diminished on. Like I say, if you wanted to, you could put your diminished on there or you could put it just there as well. But that's just a little reference point to help you. Yes, I've got this here, but what I'll do is I'll jump on the guitar and I'll show you how this works in a few different positions. Okay. 